welcome to another vlog. I have not vlogged since Lake Tahoe, so I thought I would catch up with you guys, see how you guys are doing. I am doing okay. We'll do we'll do sort of a, a deeper mental check-in a little bit later because I have some news to catch you up on and it really kind of disrupted our Lake Tahoe trip, but I was hoping to not I don't know, not have it show in that vlog. I really wanted that vlog to just be kind of relaxing and show Lake Tahoe as it was. But anyway, enough of that. I am just kind of getting ready for the day. I just jumped out of the shower and I was about to just kind of finish up my skincare and I thought I would do that with you guys. And um, as you guys know, I have been testing out and playing with Pi Skincare. So I've been using their cleanser, I've been using their toner, I've been using their oil and I've been using their lotion, their face lotion, and I have been loving it. It has been just about a month now and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I've been using it as my daytime skincare and this video is sponsored by Pi. So thank you so, so much to Pi. They are an organic skincare brand. They are based over in the UK and I thought I would just kind of show you how I've been using these products. So, like I said, I just showered. So what I would normally do, obviously if I wasn't filming for you guys, I would um, put on their cream cleanser onto dry skin. So this is the Middle Mist 7 Calm Camellia and Rose Gentle Cream Cleanser. It has a wonderful pump top. So what I would normally do is I would pump out like two or three pumps, I would spread that all over my dry skin, and then I hop in the shower, and then I just kind of rinse it off in the shower. Uh, today, since I wanted to demo this for you guys, I already showered, so I'm kind of going through the steps a little bit differently, uh, but I'm gonna do basically the same thing. So I'm just gonna pump out some products. So it's got this really rich, lovely cream texture. And my skin is dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and just spread that evenly. And I really love using this during the daytime. Oh, I wish, oh, I wish you guys could smell this. There's no fragrance in these products, but just the natural ingredients in here. It really just smells like a spa. It actually reminds me of a spa that I've been to in the Caribbean. Oh, it just smells so good. I love using this as my daytime kind of like first cleanse of the day because it's so gentle. I mean, it's really, you're just like rubbing cream all over your face. It feels so, so great. And I have dry skin. I have very dry, kind of sensitive, uh, eczema prone skin. I am 47, but I've always had dry skin. It's not something that I feel like I've developed as I've gotten older. I developed eczema like back when I was in high school. So I've always had dry skin. It really doesn't have much to do with my age. And this cleanser just does such a lovely job like prepping my skin for all of the other skincare, makeup, like anything else I'm gonna be doing that day. The cleanser comes with this washcloth. It is double-sided. One side is like a looped terry, and then the other side is kind of like a muslin. So what I like to do is wet the towel, I wring out as much of the excess as possible. And obviously you can do you can do whatever you want. I don't think it makes that much of a difference, but I just take the muslin side and wipe away the cream cleanser. And then I'll take the terry cloth side and just kind of like finish it up and just make sure I get all of it off. And I'm not wiping hard or anything, just gently wiping it all away. And this is such a wonderful little thing to include. It has a little loop here if you wanna hang it up on a little hook to dry. It's really, really wonderful. A really nice companion to this uh, cream cleanser. Um, so after that, what I do is I use their toner. You can see I've been <laughs> loving this toner. It comes in a spray bottle. And I actually mentioned this in my Lake Tahoe vlog when I was using these products. This coming in a spray bottle. I know that's not earth shattering. This is not the first toner to come in a spray bottle, but all my toners come in bottles where you have to drip it onto a cotton pad and then, you know, wipe it on your face. This is so much more convenient and great for travel because I didn't have to pack any of those cotton pads. And when I mentioned how much I love the spray bottle, one of you commented that you always like put your toners and things that can be sprayed, you put them in spray bottles because it really is just so much more convenient. And well, you won't have to do it <laughs> if you use this pie toner because it already comes in a spray bottle, but I love it. And this toner has been great. So you can use it after you cleanse. You can also use it as a refresher during the day. So you can use it over makeup. I would probably just do like 
one or two spritzes, I wouldn't go in with as much as I just did because it's my face is pretty wet. And on the days that I remember, I will throw this in my purse. And if I'm wearing kind of like a mask all day, I'll just kind of lift my mask up and just kind of like spritz that part of my face just to kind of refresh it. If it starts to feel a little muddled in there, I really like kind of freshening things up with a toner. And this has been so so good so like when i take off my mask like in the car between errands or something i'll take my mask off i'll spritz this put the mask back on and it just it just i don't know it just feels so much better so i've been doing that and i haven't actually experienced any mask knee which is great i don't know if i can attribute it to this but i think this has probably helped and i didn't even tell you what the full name of this toner is this is the living water rebalance toner it is rice plant and rosemary it's a purifying tonic love it um, next up we have moisturizer so they sent over the rosehip bio regenerate rosehip seed and fruit universal facial oil that is this guy and they also sent over the love and hate h-a-i-g-h-t avocado and jojoba hydrating moisturizer so between the oil and the moisturizer i've had to play around a little bit to see like what order I like putting them on. Do I like the oil first or the moisturizer first? And I personally like the oil first. I feel like this is absorbed into my skin really nicely. And then the moisturizer kind of locks everything on. I feel like if I put the moisturizer on first and then the oil on top, the oil just kind of sits there. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing because I'm using these products during the day, I don't want like the oil to be sitting on my face. I feel like that just may interfere with like makeup application or when I put SPF on top, like it all just gets really like a lot on my face. So I like the oil first and this oil is fairly dense. I don't feel like I need more than three drops ever, two generally if I'm feeling pretty well hydrated. I'm gonna do one, two, we'll start there. And I just pat it in, bring it down my neck. And I just keep pressing until I feel like it's been absorbed. And of course, any extra, I really get onto my hands here, <laughs> really get into those cuticles. All right, and last but not least, the Love & Hate uh, Moisturizer. I don't need a lot of this moisturizer either, much like the oil, so I'll just pump out one pump is pretty much all I need. Two, again, if I'm feeling a little bit dehydrated that day. Oh, smells so fresh. If you just close your eyes and put your hands over your nose, it's like aromatherapy. I do have a coupon code for the Pi Skincare website, which I will flash on the screen or I'll put it down below in my description box, but definitely check down below in the description box for like the link and like how much the discount is for and all the good information. But I have really been enjoying these products a lot, these four especially, but I have really been enjoying these products for my daytime skincare routine. So a huge thank you to Pi Skincare for not only sending over these lovely products for me to try, but for sponsoring this video. Thank you so, so much. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, kind of finish getting ready and, I think I'm going to set you down while I'm doing my hair and just have a little catch up with you guys. Here is my outfit for the day. I've worn this blouse a gazillion times for you guys. It's something from H&M. It's just cotton. It has these like slightly oversized buttons, which I think are really a nice touch. So I can wear this open, throw on some necklaces, which is what I've been doing lately, or if I'm just feeling really kind of stoic and plain, I'll just button it all the way to the top there. And then I just have some elastic waisted <laughs> wide cut pants here. This is one of those work from home outfits that I absolutely love because these are both cotton, super comfortable, elastic waisted, super oversized, but I feel like I look presentable, like I could go out and run errands, not a problem, um, but they're like pajamas. Just love it. So let's uh, head on over to my filming slash beauty room. I'm gonna get ready for the day and just have a little catch up chat with you guys. Love this thing. Okay, I'm gonna shut up about it because I 
talk about it incessantly. Um, I'm just going to throw on some makeup. I think I'm going to fast forward this part, but if you're interested in what I have on my face, uh, just check the description box down below. having a little bit of a heart to heart with you guys while I was doing my hair but I realized my microphone wasn't pointing at me so the sound is awful um, but I just kind of finished up my hair and makeup and I thought let me just talk to you guys again because what I was saying was um, or you know I was giving you kind of like a life update and um, how I've been doing um, I posted that vlog where I was talking about how I was you know struggling a few vlogs ago anyway um, I received some more bad news uh, about a week ago. I have a lump in my throat. Sorry, I'm trying. I'm trying not to get emotional, but uh, a very, very dear friend of mine passed away from lung cancer uh, about a week ago, and uh, she had been struggling for quite a bit. And um, I'm happy to know that she's at peace now. Um, she was in ICU for a very long time, uh, having a very hard time breathing. So. Um, that's one thought that's been comforting me. Um, but uh, I just, I'm sad that I couldn't get to see her one last time before um, she passed. And I was really hoping to just say hi to her one more time. You know, she was the owner of Nitty City, which is a yarn store on the Upper West Side. And she was just, I mean, just such a special person. She just, she was so generous. Um, and so kind and all of that was wrapped up in this very petite Chinese American woman uh, who was a New Yorker so there was you know a few rough edges there too I mean she just was such a unique special individual and she was um, one of the most influential figures, I guess you could say, in my knitting life, in my knitting world. So when I first got into knitting, I wanted to learn how to knit and I wanted to open up a yarn store and she owned uh, Knitty City. And I actually attended a talk that Pearl gave about um, like owning a small business and the impact that's had on her life, um, her personal life, what it means to be a small business owner, what it means to have a retail store in New York City. And because I wanted to do this, I went to this talk and that's how I became aware of Nitty City and Pearl. And I, you know, really wanted to do it, but I thought, you know, I don't know really much of what it is to, to own a yarn store. So I approached Pearl after this talk and I said, I introduced myself and I said that I was interested in doing this and would she, uh, want to hire me as an intern. I told her I wasn't expecting any pay. I just wanted the experience um, But I told her of course I would work as an employee. I wasn't just gonna sit around like observing <laughs> the store I would work there. I would be uh, an employee a sales associate on the floor, uh, but that she didn't have to pay me she insisted that she Give me something. So she actually gave me gift cards uh, to the store. That's how she paid me and um, It was great. You know, I was getting into knitting. I was learning about different fibers. I was buying a lot of yarn a lot of yarn and um, only someone like Pearl <laughs> would take on a person that essentially was saying hi I'm I think I'm going to be a future competitor of yours would you mind showing me all your ways <laughs> you know when I approached her I didn't even really think about it that way and I don't even think she thought about it that way it's only looking back do I think this is such an amazing example of how special Pearl is she just wanted to nurture and she loved the knitting community so much. She really wanted um, to bring her favorite people into it. So um, when I started designing, um, she she said to me, oh, good, good, good. You know, you know, having a retail store is a real pain in the ass. It's a real pain in the ass, Michelle. <laughs> and she was wonderful. And when I started designing, 
Um, she was, of course, so supportive of that. She had me do a talk at Nitty City and... I mean, she was just such an incredible person. And I know when I say this, I am speaking for every person in the knitting community that's ever met Pearl, anyone that's ever met Pearl, that she is a huge, huge loss. She was really, really special. And you know, years later after, you know, I had been a designer, I was making a living doing it. Again, with so much of her help, um, I decided I wanted to open up a yarn store. I pretty much came across this opportunity where I could be like a pop-up store, but for a long time. I would pop up every single weekend in Brooklyn and I did that for a while. But before I kind of solidified all that, I sat down with Pearl. She offered to sit down with me and my friend Melissa, who I was doing the, the pop-up store with. And um, she said, are you sure? <laughs> I had never forgotten her initial words where she said that it was such a pain in the ass. And she said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I think I can handle it. You know, it's only it's only the weekends. Of course, it's not only the weekends. Um, and she said, OK. And she, you know, talked us through it. You know, what kind of money we would probably need to start up um, brands that she liked working with, you know, just passing along any information that she could. And again, just completely out of the generosity of her of her heart. She just didn't need to do any of that. She didn't need to talk to us about any of this. And she's been the very first thought in my mind every morning since she's passed. So anyway, I've been dealing with that. Again, you know, life, um, these things, these things happen, unfortunately. And I keep mentioning to you guys, like I did at the beginning of the Lake Tahoe vlog, that all the, all those little changes that I've made really, you know, if you think about it, very, very minor changes, just what I'm eating, well, which I guess isn't that minor, but you know, what I'm eating, um, you know, doing my morning pages, writing to-do lists, um, making sure I'm staying active, all of these things I, I truly believe have helped me kind of get through all of this. Um, I, I think I would not be in any kind of mental state to be filming videos uh, for you guys. And it's, it's been really busy and I'm glad that I've been able to kind of keep up with things. And anyway, I, I keep talking about, um, my, you know, writing my to-do list and doing my morning pages. And so many of you have asked me, you know, what notebooks I use, which I'm so happy to talk about. I do love stationery. I, it's kind of a weakness of mine. I've, I really try and not purchase too much stationery because I do try and keep things electronically or whatever. Um, obviously I'm backing away from that a little bit, but I don't want to I don't want to go too nuts. So, um, well, why don't I show you? I've been wanting to show you guys like the notebook that I purchased and the planner that I got, which I haven't been able to use yet because it starts mid-November, but I think I'm going to be able to start very, very soon um, because I'm planning out Mishmas. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Mishmas. <laughs> I would like to do it again, but it was hard. It was really, really tough. I remember last December when I did Mishmas, uh, just to post a video every single day was challenging, challenging. Even if you're someone that posts videos six times a week, that extra day will really, really put you over the top. It is, uh, yeah, it's a killer. It's a killer. Anyway, uh, let me show you the notebooks I've been using. Okay, these are the two notebooks that I've been using. This Mont Blanc notebook is, actually it's just a notebook cover. And Mont Blanc used to create something called a diarium, and it was like a hardcover leather bound book, but it had like um, a date per page. And I used to buy those, you know, I stopped obviously when I was trying to move electronically, and then I purchased one again back in, I think it was like 2016, maybe? I can't remember. Well, Mont Blanc stopped. <laughs> printing the diarium and so I had this beautiful like leather cover with no notebook on the inside so I searched high and low it takes like an a5 uh no wait is it a5 a6 notebook I believe and you know because it's a certain size uh all of the notebooks I found were too thin they were like maybe like this thin, and then you would have all of this um, like cover left over. And then this one that I found that I've been using is way too thick, so it's actually stretching it out a little bit. I need something like right around here. Uh, but anyway, this is what I've been using for my morning pages because this is just a plain old notebook. I like the dot grid. 
but this is just a plain old uh, notebook and you know with no dates or anything and so I was using this as a notebook previously but I didn't like that it wasn't uh, like ring bound that it wouldn't lay flat basically it was just kind of annoying to write in or if I was referencing notes in this like while I was filming it would always just kind of like close or I'd have to continuously like flip back to the page it was just annoying so now I just keep this downstairs uh, where I come and you know make my coffee in the morning and I just write out my morning pages on here I fill up three pages every day and then move on so that is my morning pages notebook and then the notebook that I purchased to just be a straight up notebook is from Smithson and there is the stamp so they're uh, British based and I think they only have one boutique in the US which is in New York which is where I fell in love with them but anyway they um, ship from the UK so it took a while to get here not too bad they shipped by DHL but this is a like six ring bound notebook and so I love it because the pages just lay flat now the inserts that you've seen here are things that I got off of Amazon so these black dividers and then this dot grid paper sorry the shadow of my cameras there um, but this dot grid paper is what I purchased off of Amazon what they have included in here is their like featherweight paper which is gold gilded and then they have a bunch of dividers like in their Smithson blue but they didn't really pertain to what I need you know I want to keep track of like my to-do list I want to keep track of like you know other things like mishmas ideas video ideas things like that so this is the notebook I've been using to you know keep my to-do lists I take this upstairs with me at night I write down what I need to do the next day and it's just been really really helpful and it has pockets in here I don't see myself really using it to this extent but we'll see we'll see what happens I have kept some of the extra dividers that I purchased uh, back here and it did come with this pencil this like gold toned pencil which is really nice it rolls up and down so the name of this I, I can't remember if they call this an agenda or an organizer I think this is an organizer anyway this is the Panama Dukes and I think Panama refers to this leather and Dukes refers to this size and style so they do have um, like a faux croc more like patented kind of style um, which was very appealing but I wanted something a little bit more classic this I think is a little bit more me just this black you know tab closure um, kind of notebook I really liked it's very very simple and if you guys are not familiar with Smithson, everything comes like in their blue box. And let's see, it comes with all this like info. They included this catalog in there of their 2021 diaries. So they have really beautiful organizers. They're definitely one of my favorites and everything's tied up in this blue ribbon. Oh, here are the inserts. So these are the ones that I'm not really going to be using um, but you know like address like contact tabs I'm not going to keep my contacts in here diary etc etc I just kind of like the black ones that I ordered from Amazon um, so yeah everything comes like packaged beautifully in this Smithson box and then while I'm at it why don't I show you the planner so this is the one that I posted onto my Instagram account uh, and this is an actual planner so there's like dates on the pages it's not just a notebook and I can't remember what this one is called oh it's on here so this is the Soho fashion diary and so they have these theme diaries the fashion one I don't know if it's still going to pertain but they would have dates of when the fashion shows are in like London and then Milan and then Paris um, well New York goes first and then they have like addresses and locations of boutiques and stuff in all the cities anyway I really like it and I had one of these fashion diaries way back in the day it was smaller I had like a smaller one and I just loved it they're just so beautiful so I decided to get this one this is the faux croc and it has a little bit more of a sheen to it and this one has this beautiful closure so you just pull it out and then the book opens up hard to do with one hand and then here on the inside it is like a week per page and then a to do page so it's like that throughout the entire diary until you're done with the dates and then at the end it's just 
pages. So it's really, really nice. It's perfect for me. I think I've talked about how I'm going to use this planner in that I'm going to be really working things out in my notebook. And then the planner is really just listing like what I'm going to be doing that day, what I need to be doing that day, where my thoughts and working it all out will be in there. This is kind of like my final like to go kind of planner. So I didn't feel like I needed like a day per page necessarily. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. Um, but let's see, I think this is the first, yeah, this is the first date that we have in here. So November 16th, which is coming up a lot more quickly than I expected. And then here are those guide pages I was talking about. So like addresses of boutiques and stuff and they do it by city. So this one is New York. Here is London. Gosh, sorry about my camera shadow there. Here is Milan. So I just love these fashion diaries. They're really, really cool and huge fan of Smithson. I just got a notification that I have some UPS packages to pick up. So I am heading over there now. It is such a beautiful day here. There's like clouds in the sky, like big, like fluffy <laughs> white clouds in the sky. The blue is peeking through. It's really, really lovely. And it is only, let's see, 77 degrees out, which is so, so nice. And such a relief from this heat that we've had. It's been, I think, abnormally warm here in Vegas, but I think it's finally starting to cool down. We had that really chilly one day last week, I think it was, or earlier this week, I can't remember. Oh, but it was so nice. I was wearing a sweater all day. It was just, uh, like perfect, <laughs> absolutely perfect. So I'm really looking forward to the cooler months here. I think I've probably said that in every single video I've made so far. So I'm not sure what packages I got. I play this like game with myself. <laughs> Every single time I head over to the UPS store, I have, you know, a couple packages. They pretty much um, text me every single time a package comes in. So I play this little game with myself, trying to guess what package it is. And I'm usually wrong. <laughs> oh, wow. There is uh, one of those Bentley SUVs behind me. It is like a tank. That car is so big. I mean, it's not, obviously, it's not the biggest car I've ever seen, but it's like, it looks like it's built like a tank. Wow, my goodness. Oh my God, and there's like a Rolls Royce SUV across the intersection. What is going on? <laughs> wow, that car looks like a tank too. Jeez. And they're both white. I wonder if they know each other. All right, I'm gonna go in and grab my packages. You guys. I'm so excited. I ordered a necklace and it arrived. And it arrived a lot more quickly than I thought. And yeah, I totally guessed wrong. <laughs> That's not what I guessed this package was. I have actually purchased a few new jewelry pieces that I haven't shown you guys. I've worn them in videos, but I haven't really talked about them. So I got uh, a couple weeks ago, well, actually maybe probably a month ago at this point, I did get a pair of Bottega Veneta earrings and you guys have definitely seen me wear those in some videos. Um, so I will show those to you a little bit more close up. I hope, I hope I love this necklace as much as I think I'm going to. It just, uh, it looks so beautiful. I've been following this uh, jewelry company on Instagram for a while and I just, oh my God, I just love their pieces. So um, I found them. I finally like just did a search online for their jewelry. I, you know, was not sure of where they were carried, if they were carried through retailers, did I have to buy from them directly? I didn't know, like, I didn't know anything about them at all. And I was just so happy to have found them at like one of my favorite retailers. And um, and their pricing is, is pretty good for jewelry. <laughs> pricing is pretty good. So um, anyway, ah, I cannot wait. All right, let's open this box up. So I ordered this from Essence, which is spelled S-S-E-N-S-E. -S and love this online retailer. I don't think they have stores. I could be wrong. I don't think they have stores. I think they um, maybe originally started as a Canadian-based online retailer. Again, I could be completely wrong. Anyway, I've always loved their site. They have like really great brands, like fairly easy to navigate site, and I, I just love the brands that they carry. So this is 
from Allegheny. So here's the box. I don't know if you guys can see it because it's like white on white, but there's like an embossing in here. Anyway, the necklace that I purchased, the brand is Allegheny, as in Dante Allegheny. So um, a lot of their pieces are inspired by Dante's Inferno. Oh, this looks beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, here's the card that comes in it. Look at the, look at that jewelry. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. And I know the designer behind Allegheny is a woman. I can't remember her name right now. Ugh. But here, but here is the necklace. So it's got this really organically shaped like horseshoe. And then I think this is a freshwater pearl. The name of this is called the Flashback River and Pearl Necklace. So here's the necklace. So the pearl actually is like attached to a link. And then the horseshoe is uh, like a pendant. There it is. Oh, I love it. I wasn't sure like the um, size of the pendant. I wasn't sure if it was going to be too small, too big. Ooh, but I love it. It's like the perfect size and I love this gold. It's like a pretty deep, rich gold. I just love how organic this looks. It looks like a branch or bone. Oh, yay. Oh, I'm so in love with it. I'm so, so happy I picked this up. And again, I will leave a link to this down below because if you're into jewelry like this, I think, oh, I think you'll really like it. I'm probably late to the game as usual. You guys are probably like, yeah, Allegheny Jewelry, Michelle. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to show you these Bottega Veneta earrings that I purchased. And like I mentioned, I've worn these in a couple of videos, but I just love these so so much so they have a bunch of different colorways with like different leather so this is actual leather that's wrapped around this gold but i decided to go with the cream i really like the way it looked with the um, gold hardware but they have uh, colors with like silver toned hardware and i really love this like bright primary like kelly green that they have but it's with silver hardware and I really wish it was with gold hardware. I think I would get it if it had gold hardware. But anyway, I love this. And I love this so much because it actually reminds me of like a ram horn. And one of my favorite, favorite sheep breeds. And you develop favorite sheep breeds when you become a knitter. But one of my favorite sheep breeds is a Rambouillet sheep. And they have the most magnificent, huge, beautiful horns. And these just reminded me of ram horns. Aren't they cool? So when I first put these earrings on, you know, I stuck them in my ear hole. I was like, oh my God, these are so heavy. Like they were kind of pulling on uh, my lobe. But as soon as I got the backing on, it kind of like, I don't know, like counterbalanced it. And it's totally fine. I wore these all day and then out to a dinner and they were fine. I thought for sure my ears were going to get tired of them. Whoa, sorry. The light is really coming through. Hold on. Sorry about that. I had to raise my blinds. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, I was wearing these out and I, I thought for sure they were going to be like really heavy or like, you know, at the end of the night, like you really just want to take your earrings off. I didn't feel that way with these. They were really, really comfortable. So I'm very happy with these earrings. They came in this really fun Bottega Veneta box and there's this felt envelope that they can sit in. So this was a great purchase as well. And then a not so great purchase. I think I'm going to be returning these. Um, but these are from Modern Joe and my necklaces that I've been wearing a lot are from Modern Joe. So they were having some sort of deal, which I can't remember anymore, but it was something like buy one earring, get one like half off or you know, buy one pair, get second pair half off. Anyway, I decided to go for these 14 karat gold diamond pave little hoops. And the hoops are a little bit smaller than I thought. So here is the teeny tiny hoop. There are the diamonds. The part that you put through your ear is right here. And it's thick. It's like as thick as the actual earring. And I can't actually get it in my ear very well. And I was comparing it to like earrings that I wear all the time, like this one, and it is considerably thicker. So I wonder if these hoops, and you guys tell me because I'm not cool enough to have like holes up here, but I have a feeling that this earring is for people with holes up here. I have a feeling because this is like harder cartilage that when you get it pierced, it scars differently and the hole ends up being bigger. Is that 
is that an incorrect assumption? I'm not sure, but I just don't know why this wouldn't, this part wouldn't be thinner. So I think I'm going to return these, which I'm kind of bummed about, but I was kind of looking forward to just having like teeny tiny hoops. And I liked the idea that they had these diamonds at the bottom. there, just really subtle, but they'd probably catch the light, you know, like when you turn your head. So I was excited by the idea of these, but I'm going to return them. I'm going to return them because I just can't get them into the hole of my ear. All right. Well, I have been yip yapping long enough. I need to start filming and editing. So I'm going to go do that now and I will talk to you guys later.